Great. Thanks a lot, Irvin. Amazing. Cool. Then I think, yeah. Good. Uh, all right. Then I think we are good to go for the first presentation. It's Octopus. Already mm -hmm. pulled up his slides. So this stage is yours, Andrew. Andrew, can you hear me? Mm. So, Andrew, I can't hear you. Maybe yeah, you hear me now. There you go. All right, <laughs> let's go. All right. So we're we're considering the same setup. Last time we just did the basic. Uh, liberal radicalism algorithm, and this time we're going to go into the actual modified implementation that Gitcoin grants uses. So we saw the basic quadratic funding formula last time, which is if you have GI as the contribution from user I, then we will take the square roots of the contribution. And this is actually a, a very bad type of apology. Parenthesis should be outside the summation. So this is me, careless. Um, and we discussed that there were three basic issues that you want to overcome idea. The first problem is if someone gives a large donation, one, they still get some funds. Uh, the second problem was collusion, where users might work together to try to strictly optimize, otherwise terrible. And the third is Sybils, create multiple clones of themselves to try to. So the, the presentation today is about the modifications that get made to address these issues. So the three modifications that are made is first, in the, in the formula that is utilized, original donation extracted. And then combat collusion, there are pairwise coordination into that Sybil's trust and give users. So last, um, we looked at this setup where there were three A users who were all contributing towards a worthy goal. And there was a larger B user who was the only person to their grant. And in the original formulation, B would still get matching funds out of out of the liberal radical formula. So to combat that, you don't want B to get money because their grant might be serving. So to address that, um, you look at the formula carefully and you say, okay, what's actually happening? And Buterin, his uh, blog post that is linked in a recent board discussion with Danilo, says you should subtract off the original donation. So instead of applying the original formula as it is, you subtract off the actual x to x. Does this so far? Totally. This is a really cool breakdown of the amendments. So the the key thing here is this does two things. First is it makes um it makes it impossible to create a give myself money grant because by subtracting off the original amount, now B doesn't get any. B loses three dollars to the pool or somewhere. So grant B will now get zero dollars. B's effort to support the The second thing it does is it makes the formula look really different, but the formula is actually isn't. So let's see why the formula looks very different, but actually isn't. So if you if you actually expand out algebraically the square root of x1 plus square root of x2 plus square root of 3 toy 
what you see is that the the terms that correspond to the original donation be on the diagonal and they're currently in and then you have the other pairwise terms that come from just expanding out the algebra and distributing and those are in yellow so when you subtract off the original donation what happens is the original terms cancel and you're left with zeros on the so now what you see are nothing but a product of square root and these are interactions but this is just coming from a small modification to the original uh, LR formula. I don't know if y'all needed to through it in. So then if you expand and simplify this for three donations, you get a modified formula that looks like this. And this really places, you can drop the two because when you go to calculate everything, all the twos are going to cancel out anyway. And also K is a constant, so twice an arbitrary. But doing that little bit of math, now what you see is that this places a clear emphasis on the interaction between the pairs of rather than on the single domain. Again, as a formula, it's really simple subtractive but it kind of shifts our perspective on what we're looking at. we're adding up the square roots and squaring now we see okay we have the interaction between user two user three andrew i'm not sure if it's just me your sound is a bit broken, so I, I think I get 80 to 90 percent of what you're saying. How about the rest of you? Is it good on your end? I'm having some trouble hearing. Yes, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, it, it seems that Thank some you, packets yeah. are being lost. Mm. Is there anything you could do? Well, we already switched off video, obviously. Perhaps. Again? Is it possible to call in <laughs> using that for audio? Um, what? So I, I didn't get it because sound was broken. I wonder if you want to share your document and I can pull it up so that you uh, remove the burden for your screen sharing. And then perhaps we have a better sound. Yeah. I okay, I can't hear you anymore. I'll just try to pull up your document. It's the hack MD, I guess. So um, I put it in the Git coin. Okay, maybe you stop screen sharing, Andrew. Yeah. And I'll pull up. It's the PDF, right? Yes, it's yeah. the PDF. Okay, let, let's try. Quadratic funding continued. Can you see it? I can. Okay. Okay, let's try. What was the last slide then? We have um, seen 13. This one. 13. This one? Yep, that looks good. Okay, cool. So now, now the formula looks slightly different. Um, but it's it's very similar. It's just that we've made a small algebraic modification. But and you can go to the next. 
Now, philosophically, though, it looks different because now we're looking at interactions between pairs of users. We see that more clearly rather than single donation. And, and um, we talked last time about the possible. So that takes care of the problem that B could just fund themselves. The other problem we considered was collusion, where maybe B and C were originally in trying to fund their own project. And so they would not get any money under the, the new formula. But if they, uh, if they talked to each other and tried to split up their donations amongst the projects, then they would be able to get money. And so this is also undesirable because it's basically just gaming the system in a different form. So the second thing that Buterin suggests is to, instead of having one constant, is that you have a constant uh, or a term that changes depending on the user's i and j that measures how, how tightly their actions have been correlated or coordinated. So instead of having just one k here, we'll have three different k terms, and we can calculate those k terms to downweight users that we think are behaving strategically against the system. So let's see how we calculate the KIJ. So you find, um, remember that P sub I and P sub J are the contribution I and J to a project P. So we define the coordination coefficient, Cij, as just the sum of the square roots of Pi times Pij. So this is taking the contributions that these two users have made to all of the projects, taking the square root and multiplying, and then adding over all of the projects. And if you, if you have any experience with physics or multivariable calculus, this might look familiar. This, would, this could be interpreted as an inner product between two vectors. Next slide. So in this basic example where user one is giving four units to A and user two is giving six units to A and uh, user two is giving five units to B and user one's not giving anything to B, you can take that data and you can reinterpret it as two vectors. For, for user one, the vector would be um, square root of four, square root of zero, and I have that visualized in blue in the lower left-hand coordinate axis. And then user two would be square root of six, square root of five, and I have that visualized in red. And so their C12 coefficient, if you calculate it, would be four point. And there's a way to think about this geometrically. This is sort of measuring, this, this is measuring uh, how closely the user's contributions went in the same direction. So another way to think about it is you're, you're measuring the angle, in some sense, between the two vectors. If they had no contributions in common, it would be a, a 90 degree angle. And if all their contributions were in common, then they would have an angle of zero degree. Okay, next. So then you take the, the Cij that we just calculated and you can transform it into a Kij by setting Kij equal to R over R plus Cij, where R is a parameter that you can tweak uh, depending on how you want to weight the system. So in the Gitcoin implementation, R is equal to So what this does is as Cij grows, as they become more and more coordinated, this term will tend towards zero. And so users that are completely coordinated and basically clones of each other will have their contributions downweighted towards zero, and that disincentivizes collusion. Um, so just as a basic calculation, we look at the collusion attempt that we, that we started with. Without this pairwise coordination, the score that would be used for calculating uh, grant uh, matching would be 2.5. And if you go to the next one, after you incorporate the grant matching, it's 0 0.41. So in this instance, it, it was a significant.
So um, Baturin actually gives a proof that for colluders working on a single grant, this will place an upper bound that you can give exactly on how much they could extract from the system. And so they're, they can't dominate this. They may be able to get funds, but you can, you can say, well, it's not going to be more than this amount. Um, for colluders who are trying to allocate their funds among multiple grants, this is exactly what we're addressing in the math working group what the optimal strategy would be and how much the pairwise penalty. And the final um, potential attack or potential bad action that we discussed was a Sybil strategy where B might try to pretend to be multiple different people. And if B gives three copies of himself $1, then there, the funds for grant two will match the funds for grant one. So to address this in the in the Gitcoin grants implementation, each user gets a trust bonus that's based on some kind of credible evidence that they actually are a unique sentient being. Um, I believe I I don't know the details of this. And I believe this is based on things like linking to social media accounts that have a long history or multiple posts. Any evidence that's difficult to fabricate, fabricate could work as a trust bonus. Um, and I was discussing with Danilo in the, in the Discord exactly what the nature of that is, and it seems that we're still, I don't know exactly. It is something that's implemented. You can see it in the GitHub code. So then to, to calculate the, the trust that a pair of users should receive, you just take the max of the trust of the pair. So that if there's one highly trusted user in this pairing, then the, the pairing gets a lot of trust. That's sort of an interesting design choice because it's than if you took the average. Um, like what this means is that in theory, one highly trusted user to have a lot of impact on a civil attack, although the coordination penalty would kind of wash that away since the trust bonuses. If it, yeah. So then you you use that when weighting the pairwise contribution as well, and so now we're ready to actually give the formula in a in a few steps. So yeah, if you would continue. So um, if you if you believe the TIJ and the KIJ that we just laid out, then for a grant G, you can define M of G to be this double summation. So it's just taking the square root times square root term that we talked about, and then weighting it by the pairwise coordination penalty and by the trust bonus. And um, I mean, I don't know if this is, so the way I've implemented this is a little bit different than the way it's described elsewhere, because I'm, I'm thinking about the sum of the intercepts starting one past the index of the outer summation, which is just a slightly different way of writing it. If you see it written differently, what I'm trying to say is the exact same thing, just in notation that, that tracks better for me personally. So I just said this in a couple of different ways, like what this boils down to is this formula. So this is saying in more verbal way, what I said in the previous slide in a more symbolic way. And I think I probably said it one more time a different way. You like a mix in symbolic, sometimes I do. But all of these are saying the same things in different ways. So then you take this M of G and you use it to actually define the matching. So let's call F of G. You, you go into Can you still hear me okay? More or less. I, I probably should go to the next slide. Yes, that sounds good. 
Um, so then you take the t so if the total contributions to all of the projects exceeds the amount in the external pool, then you just do a a pie piece of pie essentially, where the percentage of the total M of G formula that an individual grant receives you weight that so you're just dividing up the pie of T, cutting it into pieces. By the size of each piece is given by um, the proportion of matching or the M formula that we just. So that that feels pretty understandable because it's like a pie chart. <laughs> and it's just that the area of each slice in the pie chart comes from this this weighted division. Next slide, please. Um, in the other case, the formula is different, and to be honest, I don't completely understand the, I'm sure there is a rationale, I was not able to work through it and understand it as intuitively as I understood everything up to this point. So I'm going to try to explain just what I see happening, but if someone else has more insight, I would, I would love to learn um, about what this is. So if you'll go to the next slide, I, I try to say what I think this log business is doing. Um, so qualitatively, if T is greater than the sum of all the M of P formulas, then taking the ratio and the log gives a weight based on how much larger T is than the total M of P. And so I did not, I should have checked this. Um, because this may be incorrect. I think the log is actually probably base E, in which case this slide is incorrect. But it's still the same idea. If that T is much larger than total M scores, log is just going to scale that, that magnitude different. So that should be fixed. I'm sorry about that. I need to double check the base of And uh, next, please. OK, so it's possible there's a greater it's possible there's something obvious I'm missing at this ended to do, but I'm not going to ask for a part three <laughs> to do a deep dive on that one issue. And um, that's basically all I have. I really appreciate Angela and Danilo and other community members who have who have given me a leg up in understanding some of these things, so I could then try to verify myself. Thank you all. <laughs> Cool. Andrew, thanks so much for sharing. Any questions or comments? Yeah, it was a great presentation. I, I mean, I think this was the most uh, clear presentation about how the quadratic funding implementation actually works. So. Yeah, it definitely needs to be shared. Um, a open thing that is on my head is that, let's say, Vitalik, for example, has showed that there are some bounds for a single grant. Uh, but I keep wondering, let's say, how this, how this bond behaves when you go to the second formula. Because, I mean, we have the funding, the matching funds, but also we have the, the actual funding. And... Yeah, I I have the intuition that let's say that that part for a single grade may be a bit artificial when you take the when you get the distribution of the actual matches. And I think like that let's say most of the relevant phenomena is when we try to think about what happens when we have we have several grades instead of one. But yeah, a great presentation. Yeah, I think that I think that the several grants case is basically math working research question trying to, to trying to figure out things how much because the the optimal subgraph is basically like how much colluding users could steal quote unquote so i agree with you that that's a really interesting question i don't have good information about it yet <laughs>
So Tetris Bonus is really about uh, you have a user profile, you connect your profile, and you get some bonus like 50% uh, more match if you link your GitHub, 20% uh, more match if you link the right ID. I think there is a sale. Uh, this trust bonus is, is changing by a, on a round by round basis. So I think that maybe uh, for now we could work with a hypothesis that it's a uniform distribution between 1 and uh, 1.25. Uh, but but I, I can try to get the data. So if you guys want to fit anything to the data, I can try to search about it. But for, for simplicity purposes, I, I would simply assume that it's a uniform distribution. Yeah, GitHub, social media, Bright ID. Uh, there are some services that they are adding. Uh, it's always changing, so the only way to know it is to actually get that on the GitHub website and see it by yourself. On, on top of that, can I ask, can I ask something as well? Um, about this trust bonus, the, the, the formula was the, it, it was it's, it's taking the max of the pairwise or the of all the contributions, the TIJ uh, factor. Because I I recall that Andrew said yeah well basically uh, you could take an average or something like that. How where does does this uh, yeah where does this um, <clears throat> max function comes from or what, what's the rationale behind that? So that's that's a question for the people who write the Gitcoin code. Um, I guess it, there's just saying that if you if you have the same actions as someone we really trust, then we're going to assume that that action is well motivated. So you can basically borrow people's trust if you're acting in the same way as someone that is well trusted by the community. Yeah, but would, you would say that you, you, you should take the max of all the other contributors, maybe also contributing to that grant or some, some more complex formula to calculate the trust bonus and to prevent collusion or, or something like that. So, I mean, I think that would be an awesome question for people to experiment with. Um, you know, what are alternative formulations of the trust bonus? But I, I, I'm not criticizing this choice, but it is clearly one choice out of many. Yeah, my feeling is that it's a bit, uh, it's a bit of arbitrary. I, I can't speak for the people who coded, but uh, my feeling is that, let's say, if we get a farm, a farm that tells that we should have a trust bonus per grant and it has a good rationality, it could be a valid suggestion. Uh, what I mean is that I'm not exactly sure, let's say, how... How set is in test on is this formula of the trust bonus? Um, I have a question. Uh, first of all, is this how the Gitcoin grant matching works now, or is this a proposed change? So the pairwise trust bonus as of now, the, the max TTG is the correct implementation. Um, and as well as the subtraction of the initial uh, contribution as, as well? Yeah, that's the, everything that the, the Octopus has shown to us today is the current implementation. Okay, I, that's good, that's good to know. I, I had another question, so uh, it, the Gitcoin grant, uh, the whole purpose is to get the community to kind of agree on the best projects to fund, I think, or that's one of its purposes. So I've always been a little confused. If we take like a really pathological case where the entire community funds a single, you know, the same grant, would that grant be penalized for what appears to be collusion? Yeah, uh, if it every, I mean, uh, there are some ways of on how this pairwise algorithm could penalize certain grants. Like for example, uh, Gitcoin has a feature called collections where several people donate to the same set of grants. Uh, 
Em tesis, é, tá, todos os collections quando bem penalized vai ter pairwise e ter, vai ter pairwise comparison. Yeah, because so, okay, my J. Yeah, so I mean, I think it is another open problem. So I mean, how much we are losing by making that choice of algorithm? And uh, how much in absolute values we are losing? So I think that, let's say, having a, estimate, a numerical estimate for that, it's an open problem. Yeah, OK, thanks. So there, there's also. Well, there, there's also there are humans who make the final decision by making um, a, human beings have to sign off on the final allocations. So oh. they do sometimes go and hand like throw out a, a project that seems to be clearly malevolent, and they they issue reports before the funds are issued, and you know the a multitude of people have to sign off. So. In the case you describe, I think the people would just say, well, this is clearly what the people want. Give it the money. Yeah, I see. Yes, I mean, there are so many design choices to make this and One of the things I've been trying to do, and I hope it hasn't been annoying or anyone, it's my motivations are sincere, but I have been, you know, trying to get the people who write the Gitcoin code to make some of their design choice, like to explain the motivation behind some of their design choices, just so I can understand it better and understand them better. All right, so the, these slides will be shared again on our one-stop shop um, and G Drive. So feel free to dig into that. And yeah, Irvin, perhaps we can have another presentation next week on the behavioral economic side. And on a side note, 10th of March, tomorrow is the start uh, of another Gitcoin Grants round. So if you want to observe it in real time, um, Gitcoin Grants round nine is launching tomorrow. And from then on, uh, we, we yeah, can have additional information on, okay, what information is presented to the current users, um, the grants. Also, there, I, I'm sure there will be additional A-B testing of, of the interfaces and I haven't checked out what is required for the trust bonus in this round. So, um, yeah, this is the latest stage then of Gitcoin grants. Awesome. First hand experience, exactly. All right. Now, um, let's. Now have the second presentation, Jay. Yeah. Oh, this would be perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, time for you to get ready. I'll stop screen sharing. Mm -hmm.